Our next session will be led by Rebecca Cooney, a scholarly associate professor with more than 26 years of experience in professional communication. She serves as the director of Murrow Online Programs and as a co-investigator for the Center of Excellence in Natural Product Drug Interaction Research. In 2022, Rebecca was selected as a Les Smith Distinguished Professor and a PH Digital Fellow with the Knight Foundation. Previously, she was the recipient of the President's Distinguished Teaching Award for Career Track Faculty, the Oaks Award for Innovation in Teaching, and she received the Scripps Howard Visiting Professor in Social Media and Planck Center Education Fellow Awards. She is professionally certified in learning experience design. So without further ado, please welcome Rebecca Cooney to the stage. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Welcome. We're going to get right into it. I'm excited to see the Consumer Behavior Internship. Um, that's one of the ones that we're talking about today. So the focus of today's session is student internships and how they can benefit your classroom by enhancing learning experiences for your students. So I'm going to talk about my experience and approach with internships and how they have provided my students with immersive, hands-on experiences that engage them in active learning. But before we begin, let's do a couple of quick polls. So we're going to pop over to the polls here. Are they coming through? There we go. Question number one is, do you currently use some internships in your curriculum? A simple yes or no really helps me here. Okay, interesting, great. In a way, that's great because I think I'm get, I, I'll be educating you a bit today on, on the value of uh, some internships. Um, and then go ahead um, when you're ready. I know we've, we've got a few more people. The second poll, for those that are using some internships, how would you characterize your overall approach? Are you, are you pretty hands-on, like real, real into it, high level of coaching versus letting the students kind of do their own thing and self-pace in a way, obviously with deadlines, or a mix of both? Interesting. Okay. I'm asking these questions to get a gauge from the group about the current integration of some internships and curriculum, as well as a better understanding of your current approach to teaching. Perfect. You can share the results, Jacob. Okay, so what I'm seeing is we've got about 71% of the group that answered not using some internships currently, and another, it's a real split, um, split on faculty-led versus student-led um, versus mix of both. We've got a three-way on that. Okay, that helps me so much. Thank you. So here is a roadmap for, oh, can, am I, I'm not advancing my slides. Hey, Rebecca, you accidentally kicked yourself off stage when you advanced your slides. Just hop back on. Am I back? back on? You're back on. You. Sorry yeah. about that. Should I start at the beginning of the roadmap here? I apologize. Sorry. This is our agenda for today. And what we're going to talk about um, is about a 45 minute interactive session please be sure to put your comments in the chat. I do have a couple of prompts as well um, to keep the conversation lively and, and moving forward. But just so we're all on the same page, I'm gonna go ahead and begin with a brief orientation on some internships with a high level overview of what they are and what student offers. Next, we're gonna spend some time on a proven model that I follow um, and my approach of integrating some internships into curriculum for both in-person and online courses. And that's a four-step process. 
And then I'm going to bring things full circle with a couple of wrap ups, some reminders, some resources, and we'll close it out with an open Q&A in the last five minutes or so. All right, here we go. And I'm multitasking and I don't want to lose if I hover. Here we go. Okay, here we are. So as Stukent says, simternships are meant to augment the classic internships, not replace it. They provide students with broader, more standardized access to hands-on education. That's from their website. And as noted by developments in business simulation and experiential learning, in-curriculum simulations provide structure so students take initiative and are accountable for results. They promote critical thinking and analysis, synthesis of information and reflection. They deliver personal learning results that create future learning opportunities and identify real life principles. And they help students apply lessons learned to other situations. Here we go. This is a lineup of the current internships that are offered by Stukent. I wanted to give you this for context and lets you know that I am currently using the social media marketing internship in an online graduate course and the consumer behavior internship that was just featured in the video in an in-person undergraduate course. Uh, and this fall, I'm going to be integrating the advertising internship in a course, another in-person undergraduate course that's all graduating seniors. So I'm very excited to be doing it. So internships have transformed my classroom experience, definitely for my students. Partnered with the e-textbook and chapter quizzes, video case studies, interactive class discussions and assignments and activities, my classes not only inform and prepare these students in their academic and professional pathways, the combination of activities both enlights and ignites them. And it inspires them um, for a stronger attendance, big, big talking point on my campus these days, engagement and then community among peers. Here. So here is this process that I'm going to talk about to, for the next 25 minutes or so. Um, and this is the process that I recommend when integrating internships into curriculum. It's, it's a four-step process that I developed over time, and it begins with preparing yourself as the educator and facilitator of the internship. Next is planning your lesson and how the internship fits into your curriculum. Then comes the actual implementation of the internship and making decisions about your level of involvement in the student experience. And then finally, we'll talk about how to create a sense of community as students work through each round. And I'm paying attention to the chat just a little bit. Wonderful comments coming through. Appreciate that. You'll have a chance to also give some feedback here in a second. So I'm going to begin with preparing yourself as an educator and facilitator in the of the in curriculum internship. I first experienced internships in a couple of falls ago when I took over a class that a colleague created. It was my first experience working with in curriculum sim simulations, and I will admit first to admit that I did not do my diligence as an educator in preparing to teach a class that included a simulation component. I reviewed the instructor's guide, I skimmed the rounds, I familiarized myself with the content, but I missed a really, really critical step. I did not experience the simulation from the lens of a student. And wow, it was a really challenging semester. Students had questions at each round, and because I didn't experience it fully myself, I had no confidence in my ability to coach or support them. I relied heavily on my amazing student rep, to help me navigate and answer questions, but as someone who prides herself on being ahead of the game and prepared for what's happening around me, it was incredibly unsettling. So given my teaching load and other responsibilities, I was never able to make the necessary time to backtrack and actually complete the simulation myself, so I was a stronger resources for students. I did not want to have that feeling again, so I carved out time during a holiday break and I experienced the simulation as a student. Big, big win. So I used the student handbook, I downloaded resources, 
I reviewed all the videos. I navigated through the sections of each round bit by bit. I read the memos. I engaged in the chat. I worked through scenarios and I got a grade just like a student would. Because I wanted to also do a better job leading the simulation experience in the live session classroom, I took it one step further and I created slide decks in tandem with my experience as I went through this each round. I used a combination of screenshots, text, and links to put these together. All of them are student content. It's just repurposed into a way um, that helps me teach that a little bit stronger. And these were also shared with the students at each round. And I just want to be, note when I get into this that the creation of the decks is not essential. It was just something that I felt that I needed to do as part of my teaching style. I'm going to give you an example of a slide deck in just a second. I'm trying to pay attention to the chat as well um, to, to make sure we're, we're all on the same page here. So this is just an example. And I think um, our folks at Sukin are going to share maybe a link in the chat. So if you want to pop out and look at these, um, look at this example. This is round four of the social media internship. It has 12 rounds. I begin with an overview of the simulation um, deck and then I follow it up with individual decks for each round. Um, centrumships are incredibly formulaic with features like videos, inbox, notifications, assignments, and resources. So once students find their rhythm, it becomes very predictable and more comfortable for everybody. I acknowledge, I just want to, for the group out here, I acknowledge that this is a lot of work for instructors to create decks like this. And, and I think students um, aware of this as a potential value add going forward, um, as, as, as we all have experienced their chapter quizzes and their, um, and the, and the chapter decks. Uh, so hopefully um, this will be something that is considered as a future resource for our educators here um, experiencing the internships. Um, so far, I have uh, just created and shared the decks with, with students. For in-person classes, this works fantastic. For online courses, it would be a value add if I included a script uh, for the instructor in the event they wanted to record a walkthrough of the materials. I share these decks in the course space as part of an assignment write-up, and they have been incredibly well received by students. They are my go-to, um, really valuable for them. And by experience the sim experiencing the internship from the lens of a student, you will set yourself up for success. You will be more confident in the material and much stronger resource for your students. So let's take just a beat here um, before I move on. I want to give you a chance to give some commentary here. Um, the second phase I'm going to talk about is lesson planning, but I want to pause and just ask you about your thoughts about going through internship from the lens of a student. Is it something that you've done yourself or would find valuable? Um, and if you haven't gone through internships yourself, have you found um, you know, limitations or barriers when it comes to coaching? I'm just curious about anyone's experience who's out there. Definitely valuable to go through, um, through the simulation yourself. Yes, Tammy, you definitely want to go through it as a student. It's my, when I coach my, my peer faculty who want to do the uh, internships and curriculum, I say, first thing you do is you go through it as a student. Um, very helpful. Yes. Done the simulation itself, looked at student results. Great, Virginie. Wonderful. Okay, excellent, thank you. I'll go ahead and move forward. All right, let's talk about um, continuing on in our process. This is number two, planning your lesson. So once you've experienced the internship, and depending on if you are also using the accompanying textbook quizzes, video case studies, et cetera, you will be better positioned to determine how you want to integrate the internship into your curriculum. There are a few things to consider, so let's let's just kind of work through them. The first one is how does the internship fit into your curriculum? Do you want to start right away or delay a couple of weeks? One issue that I found is that the internship tasks mostly align 
with the textbook chapters, but sometimes students are asked to complete tasks in the internship that they have not yet been exposed to in the readings. So it's not necessarily a barrier, but it's definitely something to be mindful of. So I absolutely kind of map, I'm paying attention to where things are in the chapter against the simulation round. And again, by experiencing the simulation, you have a much better feel for that connection. Another consideration, how much do you as the instructor wanna be involved in the coaching of the internship experience? For example, do you wanna designate class time to go through rounds and actively work through the materials with the students? Or do you prefer that the students go through it on their own and then ask questions as they come up? This decision just makes a big difference in how much class time you wanna to devote to navigating the content. And I'm just, again, peeking over at the chat. And we're, these are all great comments, keep them coming. Um, another thing to consider is the pacing. So each internship comes with recommendations for pacing, but an instructor may wanna make adjustments based on other materials that you're trying to cover in your course. I choose to run the rounds in succession versus broken up. I've done it both ways and found that running them in succession is uh, better for the students and creates a more organic flow for how the internships are integrated into the curriculum. In one class, uh, my students complete the simulations over seven rounds in seven weeks. And in another class, they complete the blocks in, they, they complete them in blocks of three rounds at a time across five lessons. And that's because the social media internship is round one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They all kind of block together. And that's just how it's designed. My main recommendation is to follow the guidelines that are provided by Stukent and to set up timing so that students cannot work ahead. You don't want them working ahead. That's particularly important if you want to build community and engagement as part of the experience. So I'm just gonna pop over here. Um, more comments on um, running the, the importance of experiencing the simulation. Um, yeah, definitely run them again as they get updated. Uh, if you've experienced the social media internship, what it was two years ago to what it is today is very, very, very different. Um, mapping the rounds, yes, very smart to do that. Great, simulation round due after the quiz. Thank you, Lisa, that's a great tip. Um, excellent, really appreciate that, Brady. <laughs> Yes, common phrase when I hear working with, I wish I would have had this when I was a student is a common phrase. I believe that, Brady. Um, and then uh, Joy, uh, creating a post re round reflection that helps them demonstrate their understanding and helps them coach. Excellent. Um, I, I also do reflections. Before I enter into the, the next phase of a round, I'm spending some quality time with them um, to reflect what they learned, what they were challenged by. Um, I, I, I do that as well. Okay, so let's go on. Um, I'm just multitasking just a little bit here. There we go. The third one on my, my process here is called I'm calling nurturing and teaching. So regardless of your decision to be actively engaged in walking your students through each round versus adopting more of a self-regulated model for students, as an instructor, you will want to engage in some level of nurturing and teaching throughout the internship experience. For my in-person undergraduate course, I decided to carve time in my lesson plan to walk through the rounds with the students. I do not give them the answers per se, but instead I let them lead the discussion and take action along the way. They have the option to either actively go through the simulation round with me during class or they can just listen and take notes. Most choose to listen and take notes and then do the simulation themselves on their own later. I use a dummy account uh, to go through each round as a student live so that when I'm showing them is also what they will experience. I begin with my slide deck as an overview and intro to the round and then I shift over to the live simulation for the walkthrough. I have them download materials along the way I engage in the inbox chat. I take action with the assignments and together we review the data sets, the annual review materials and spend down the budget. I let them lead everything. I'm just driving, but I let them lead it so that they can see the mistakes and ways to improve. It gives me an opportunity also to reinforce teaching topics of the week, introduce terminology 
and show them how to actually review and assess data. And I've just, it's just transformed how I teach um, these in my classes. In my online graduate course, I provide the slide decks, but essentially I'm hands off as a coach. I ask them to use my slide decks and student resources to self navigate through each round and encourage them to reach out and ask questions as they come up. I think both work. Um, the guided is more fun and the guided is a, is a much more active learning experience. But both approaches work well, and it really comes down to instructor preference and how much time they want to devote to coaching and teaching this aspect of the experience. Okay, so I'm gonna do another prompt here. So let's go ahead and I'm just curious from the group, what are some thoughts about your role as instructor and coach in the internship experience? Um, I'm curious about um, whether or not you, we should be, you think it's better to be active and high touch, or do you think students are better served in a self-regulated model? I'm, I'm just curious what you think. Whether or not you've done internships yet, if you were to do it today, do you think you would do it as an active coaching model, or do you think you would go lean more into the self-paced? Any thoughts from the group? Yes, Gail, or I'm sorry, Garrett, excuse me. Let, letting students make mistakes and understand them learning from those mistakes really helps them connect and improve. It, and and I, I, I happen to be able to work in table teams, my, my particular classroom setup. And so I will give them discussion prompts and, and activities and say, so talk about it amongst your group, share out loud, and then we're gonna go through it together. So I'm able to really make it um, interactive and, and participatory in that way. Yes, and I agree, Benton, the higher level of the course, the more hands off. I, I, I feel you on that. I do. Yeah, Barbara, different students benefit from different teaching, but I will tell you when they know it's Sim Day, Sim Day with Rebecca, we, I, my attendance, real high. Yeah. Good, good, Lisa, allowing the critical thinking. It's, it's, it, it's, it's a balance. I really, I really support the balance. Um, yes, vulnerable enough. Oh, you should see when I get into the red, they go, ooh, what'd she do? It's really fun. It's really fun. Sim day with Rebecca Stu, let's do it. <laughs> this is great, thank you. Wonderful comments. So let's go ahead and do this fourth one. All right, so my fourth and final process here. Um, this is about building community. For my classes, it happened really organically. I was teaching the social media sim, sim internship to an online graduate course and noticed that they had a ton of questions and they were filling up my e-box. They were just hitting up my e-box and it was going nuts. So I said, I want a mechanism to answer these questions, but not just for the student who asked the question, but to benefit the entire group. So I did something really simple. I created the social media simulation support group and it's in Canvas, and it's just a discussion forum thread. Students were immediately drawn to this community space and began sharing ideas, tricks, tips, resources. They wanna know who's in second place and how they got there. They wanna know, how did you, what did you do for your influencer strategy and influencer X and what is he or she doing and how do you beat them? And they're, and they're just sharing, 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 sharing. Very, very active in the community. And competitive by nature, they just wanna know everything about who's how that person's in first place and second place and they don't see it's it's redacted of course so they don't know who's in first place or second place but they want to know their tips they want to know their tricks and it also um really helps them interpret different data set ideas and it, it just builds this amazing community where they're helping each other and sharing with each other and um and, and supporting one another i had one that even did offline zoom meetups with students to help them navigate and i thought that was really fantastic uh, and i have another one who created a series of youtube videos for round seven through nine on the social media internship if anyone's been through it and her um, her videos have been very popular and she just talks about how she's navigating um, them because those three rounds are hard and students always uh, falter on them. So um, the support group is, is fantastic. All right, I'm gonna keep going here. 
Love the support group. I'm a big fan. So let's kind of bring some, bring a little bit full circle here. Uh, just a, a little, little recap on what we've discussed. So if, if you're going to integrate some internships into your curriculum, you will set yourself up for success if you experience this internship from the lens of a student. Top number one thing to do. After you've experienced this internship, you will be poised to determine how it fits in your curriculum. It is at this stage that you should also determine how much you want to be involved in the coaching of the experience itself, as well as how you want to set the pacing in the distribution of the internship content. Once you've decided on your approach, you can actively engage in the nurturing and teaching of the content, and this can be very high touch and interactive or more passive and self-regulated by the students themselves. The final step in this process is to create a space so students can build community around their respective internship experiences. And it's a place for self-advocacy, sharing and peer mentoring. It greatly reduces stress and it's fun. They enjoy it. And as a takeaway for this session, I think it's in your handouts. If you pop over to the handouts, I've created a little handout designed to help you navigate this process yourself and make decisions about how you want to approach and integrate some internships into curriculum. I, if you pop it there, there's a, um, both my, my slides, you'll have access to those as well as um, the, just a little handout, just a quick infographic really, that'll help you use that as a, as a navigation tool. Okay, so I think we're, we're a little early, but that brings us to Q&A. Okay, so let's see here. Do I have grad students that complete the simulation as undergrads? Oh, interesting, Holly. Um, no, not that I know of. Um, okay, so here's something I will say, Holly. I happen to be in a wonderful group of, of peer faculty who speak to each other. So we have been really, really careful that there is no overlap on our internships so that our students in the undergraduate and graduate are not experiencing the same internships. So I would say, generally speaking, they wouldn't feel it, find it to be repetitive because every internship is so different from one to the next. So I think it's a, a pretty safe bet. Okay, Rebecca, thank you so much. Um, it is, we love hearing all the different ways our instructors integrate simulations into their classroom. Um, I wanna give everyone a chance. Um, we do, we have logged some questions that you've already posted, but I wanna give everyone a chance to go ahead and type in some questions right now. But while we're waiting um, for that in the chat, um, did you know that each month student highlights a standout higher education professor who uses our products in the classroom and exemplifies our core values? Well, I'm excited to share that earlier this week, Rebecca Cooney was awarded the Stukent Professor of the Month for <laughs> April, 2023. So congratulations, Thank Rebecca. <laughs> Such an honor. When I saw that, I was like, I have to announce <laughs> that. You. So very nice job. Um, yeah, and if you wanna connect with Rebecca, we'll throw a link Please up for connect. that. Um, but, yeah, so let me get to some of the questions that we have. Um, what made you choose student simternships over other options? Well, my original, in, in, you know, invitation to the table was actually because another professor designed a class that I was assigned to teach, and and he chose to put the simternship in, and so I that was it was immediate. I, if I'm honest, I have been hesitant to do um simternships or not just internships, simulations in general whether it be from student or harvard business or, or or other tools um mostly just out of time to devote to to orient myself on the experience and wanting to be a good coach and good leader for my students and so it's mostly been a bandwidth problem if i'm honest that um, of having the time to devote to to really investigate and implement so when it was put upon me to do this internship, I had to sort of embrace it. And then after I experienced it myself, I found it very valuable. And now I really want to do um, simulations as much as possible in my curriculum. I find that real world application, the real data, I think that's the biggest 
challenge, at least in my world, of getting real data for students to look at um, that's in context of the, of the subject matter that I'm teaching. Um, it's, I, I really think it's important for them to, to see the data, interpret the data, and then make decisions based on that data. And I find that the sim, sim internships um, are by far the best way to do that. Great. Benton asked, how do you handle students who are overly competitive and don't want to discuss the simulation in class? Um, so the, the, it depends on the internship that you're using. So the social media simulation does have that competitive ranking system. Others do not. So I have, I have found that my graduate students love the competitive spirit. And if they don't want to participate in the, um, in, in the community piece in the discussion forum, it's not mandated, it's not graded, it's just an open forum, it's my support group. I just encourage them to participate. Uh, so it's very, very much optional and they can keep quiet. In, the, in my um, other internship that's the undergraduate in-person, it does not have a ranking. So that competitive edge isn't there. Um, but I suppose if students were feeling competitive, I, I would have to think about that. It's a really good question. If, if the internship I was using did have the ranking system, I would probably um, do what one of my colleagues does, which is she creates trivia night model for quizzes, uh, with student quizzes actually. Um, and she has an award system and she, um, she has prizes. She does a whole thing. So I'd probably build that in. Yeah, it's wow, fun. Nice. Okay, um, how does a simternship support and complement other aspects of your it's, course? It's a huge value add. What I see it as is that it takes the content that you are teaching and brings it to life. And in, in tandem, you're also probably doing some level of case study work, you're doing in-class activities, you're giving them quizzes, you're giving them assignments, both individual and group. And I just see the internship as like validating, like really validating all the things that they're learning and reinforcing the readings. And it really, to me, when you think about how, I don't know what's happening on your campuses, but we're, we're heavily encouraged to do open education resources and not spend and not have force students into purchasing um, educational products. And I, I understand that, and I and I, I I absolutely respect that as a as a as a mission. But what I would say is that if you're going to use a textbook and you're going to use materials and you're going to charge them for it, let's make sure that they're getting so much out of it and that it is immediately applicable to the work that they're doing and the lessons that they're learning. And so I feel a lot better having a a, a paid textbook that also has quizzes video case studies, assignments, interactive discussions, simulation. They're getting this really wonderful suite of valuable learning materials and they're and they're getting their money's worth when they do that. Great. Would you recommend using a simternship at the beginning, middle or end of the so course? So I started one of them because it's 12 rounds. The the social media sim, I almost had we we were on 15 week um I almost have to do it pretty early days. I think I give them a week of a grace period and then we start it. Um, I also, just from my understanding of like the way that students' brains connect to material, I'm very formulaic in the way I design my lessons as well. So I want it to be chapter one, round one, week one, chapter two, round two, week two. I like to keep it really, really clean if possible. So sometimes, I find that starting at the very beginning, it just keeps them on track where they're not trying to remember chapter three and round seven, you know, they're, they're it, so just for their ways for their brain to, to connect to the material. Um, but I think it doesn't really matter. I, I, I believe that pushing it out a couple of weeks might be advantageous as they're getting sort of oriented and comfortable in the course material before you introduce the simulation. Um, I, I would say it's it's really up to you and it's it's how you want to build it in as part of your overall um, suite of materials that you are uh, covering in the course. Okay, great. Um, what has been the biggest benefit that you've noticed by using a internship in the students class? Students come up to me and talk about it. Students get um, get excited when they under when they review the data and know what they're looking at. I have had students tell me that it has prepared them for job interviews because they can use the proper language. It gives them the vocabulary that they need to talk about 
um, how they have applied what they've learned. Um, there's pride in getting in getting into the green, if you know what I'm talking about in the green. Uh, there is uh, it's it's highly rewarding, is what I'm hearing from all of my students. Great. Um, you mentioned earlier that you made the mistake of not going through this this internship as a from the student perspective. Um, are there any other rookie mistakes that you would want to share that you made? Um, another rookie mistake would be not looking at the resources and data sets that are provided throughout the internship. There are a number of downloads that um, everyone is asked to uh, to do uh, or view, and they're um, in the ones that I'm thinking of. They're usually annual reports or they're um, that like defining how you can use social media, the different types of social media posts. Um, vocabulary, data sets. Uh, and so one of my other early rookie mistakes was that I really, I sort of skimmed over the resources versus actually looking at them, interpreting them myself and understanding what they're trying um, to, to do as, as, as far as how they um, connect to the material in the, in the internship itself. So it's not just skimming through and click, click, click. It's also digesting and paying attention to the material so that you can interpret that for the students when you get questions or if you run it live in the classroom. Great. So one last question that we have is from Lindsay. Do you always share the rankings with your you know, students? You know, I don't share. So they, maybe somebody else from students can help me out. They are able to see where they rank. They don't see the, the, the peers' names, but they actually can see it on their own. Um, so I don't think I have to tell them. I think they are able to see that. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, Rebecca, thank you so much for joining us today and for taking the time to be with us. And congratulations oh. once again on your <laughs> Professor of the Month Award. Time. Yeah. Excellent. Well, we'll see you then. Thank you.